Hey guys, I'm Ray from the Teach Better team and I have the amazing Chad with me and we just got off an epic Twitter chat. Chad, what'd you think? Yeah. I thought it was fantastic. Uh, I love the fact that so many teachers and administrators were part of this chat. So you literally got to hear from every aspect, whether they were principals or higher up administrators. Um, and then, uh, um, it, it was just really cool to hear like the different perspectives. So like, I loved hearing that the principals wanted to meet the needs of their staff and be the best leaders they possibly could. And it was really cool for me to see that dynamic, right? So I feel like we forget that principals are often in the same position as teachers just on a different scale, right? We, we all have the same goal. We're all trying to reach more as many students as possible. But sometimes it doesn't feel like principals are on our side as educators when they want to be. And if you don't feel that way, there's probably a miscommunication somewhere along the way. And I think some of the responses and things that we heard in this chat tonight kind of it really echoed that to me. Um, a lot of the the most common thread I heard uh, was the one that you mentioned before the chat, and that was listen, 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 listen more. Uh, whether you're a teacher, whether you're a, a principal, whether you're an administrator, um, just listen more than you talk. Um, there's a great quote, and this is something that I always uh, try to work on, and that is that uh, uh, instead of listening to respond, listen to hear, right? Um, so a lot of times they say, you know, if you're listening to someone talk or you're in a meeting, you end up listening and you're planning your response. And we all kind of do this. We kind of think of how we're going to respond. And I used to be really bad at this. And it's something I've had to really work at is um, just slowing down and hearing what people um have to say um because then you can thoughtfully respond you can think about your response and you can truly value the input they're having instead of worrying about what you're going to say next right um so it was really cool to to hear that perspective from both the teachers and the leaders um one of my favorite things was uh, there was a principal in the chat i don't i can't remember their name i apologize um but um, they said that they kind of rely on their instructional coach as a leadership coach as well. So if they're, they kind of co-plan staff meetings together and they kind of signal each other if, you know, you're going too long on a meeting or kind of gathering that feedback. But I think that articulates and shines a light on, on what can build the most capacity for all of us. And we talked about this prior to the chat, and that is put a spotlight on yourself first and, and be willing to reflect, be willing to adjust, be willing to be flexible to meet the needs of your staff or your students. Because if you're not hearing that, um, you're not going to be able to make those adjustments and you're going to have to, you're going to end up, you know, you're talking to a bunch of deaf ears. And so, so that was really cool to me. Um, so yeah, it was, uh, that was a really long response to that question, but it was a great chat and, and I'm excited about it. No, I thought it was a great chat too. And I think a lot of what you said was what I was seeing in the chat as well. There was some great insight that I liked seeing uh, two parts. One was very similar to what you were saying at the very end, focused on uh, when you have leaders that don't listen. And then there was this great quote that went through and I've seen it before, but it was, you know, um, a leader that doesn't listen ends up having a staff that has nothing to say, right? Yes, there's, I, I'm so glad you said that. I'm but so there's glad. so much, it was, yeah, yeah, so much power in not just a building principal, but how we let our students take leadership roles, how we let our parents get involved in leadership. I mean, there's there's a really cool focus I saw, which I was excited to see, and that a lot of the leadership elements it was not just at one level, but but strong consistency across the entire line. The things that we teach our students to be good leaders, the way that we allowed them to take ownership of their classroom is very yeah. similar to the themes that we saw our principals saying they need to do with their teachers. And then some district leaders saying they needed to do with their principals. And so yeah. to be able to see that kind of systematically all blend into the same core values and 
having all of us need to work on listening better and, and doing these pieces. I thought that was really cool. Yeah, I, I agree with you 100%. So I think there's a cool way you can look at it, this. Like, so it's like, if you're going to take away two primary things from this, it's that everyone wants to feel valued and heard, right? Like universally, whether you're an administrator, whether you're a building administrator, whether you're a teacher, whether you're a student, whether you're a parent, you want to be valued and you want to be heard, yeah. right? But the other unalienable truth is that no one can do this job by themselves. No one can educate a district. No one can educate a school. No one can educate a, a classroom as an individual. The teachers come pretty close, but like we can't do it alone. We have awesome PLNs. We have colleagues. We have, you know, support from our leadership and stuff as well and support from parents and everything else. So um, with those two things, though, like no matter where you are in the chain of, of command, right? Um, you want you want the same thing. So if you're a leader, you want to be heard and valued. But if you're the person being led, you also want to be heard and valued, right? Um, so for any classroom, school, or district to be functional, there has to be, and I love that it kind of comes back to this capacity, right? Like this chief capacity um, builder, because no one has the individual capacity to do this job on their own. Therefore, you have to trust and you have to build capacity within others through quality of leadership, through trust. Like Mark Levine uh, just said, it starts with taking the risk to trust. Um, like that's beautifully said. But when people and there's feel been a, there's been a few comments saying that you need to have that that balance of appreciation. You need to make sure that you're reflecting right. All these pieces together then build yeah. what you're talking yeah. about. Because, because when people feel valued, they're more willing to take criticism as well. And they're more willing to take guidance and leadership, right? So if I know, um, so for instance, like I, I feel valued from you. Like when we have our discussions on the Teach Better team about things, like I feel that I'm not saying that to be egocentric. I'm saying it to make my point. But um, I feel that you value me because you make me aware of that, that you value me. So when you provide criticism or feedback, I should say, or you, you're pushing back on something, I almost never take it personally. And that's something on the Teach Better team I think we do a really good job of is that like we all fully agree that we respect and appreciate everybody uh, in this conversation so that when we are pushing back or, or, or letting someone else take the lead or doing this and that, it's never personal because it's about the goal. It's about the mission and it's about getting there. But, well, and that builds a really strong team. That's what I really enjoy. Yeah. I want to, if we can, focus on Jeff's comment. Jeff commented that it, he has a hard time letting um, students take on leadership roles in the classroom, but he sees the power in it. And I want to address that simply because I actually also saw that theme. I saw a lot of people, whether they're classroom leaders, building leaders, district leaders, talking about kind of this balance between letting people take on leadership roles and needing the help and support and delegating, but also not wanting to let go of too much because they really want it done well. And you kind of have to trust people to delegate. And yeah. it's funny, I have this conversation all the time with colleagues I work with or with districts that we go into and talking about how there needs to be an element of trust in that risk of handing out leadership roles. And right. then as you hand out those leadership roles, whether it be in the classroom or somewhere else, you then have to mentor them through all along the way to ensure that you're all working towards this common goal. And I, that was a cool little twist I saw in some side conversations in the chat tonight, which was awesome. Yeah, because once again, just because you have expectations doesn't mean people are going to reach them without the support you need to provide, right? Like so, like oh, I like this fearless, fearless risk taking. Sorry. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and a lot of times, uh, and I, I, you know, I do this little pantomime thing uh, in a lot of our workshops. But have you ever given like the quote unquote worst student in your class? like a responsibility. I love it because it almost turns them into like citizen numero uno, like all of a sudden they're, you know, hey, be quiet over there, or, you know, get to work, you know, why aren't you doing what you're supposed to? And all of a sudden they kind of transform because 
they feel valued, they feel trusted, therefore they want the environment that they're entrusted in keeping to be to be a positive one. So like and a lot of students never get that opportunity because they're labeled early on or you know no one is willing to trust them that much so um i'm so well, glad that this yeah go ahead well i was going to start wrapping things down a little bit so if you had another point i did i was just saying it all goes back to purpose like giving yes. the students in your classroom that need a job they need a purpose and sometimes taking on leadership roles delegating leadership roles is also to make give them a purposeful role to allow sure. them to to really feel included in something something powerful and so i thought that was a a neat little sidebar i had with another teacher about how you know she was delegating to her students and and she realized that more so than anything there needed to be trust and appreciation but they also all needed to have a leadership role so they could find their purpose in owning their classroom and i thought that was just a an awesome part of our chat yeah yeah, I absolutely agree. But it was a fantastic chat. There's a ton of people watching right now that obviously also got a lot out of the chat. So um, I'm going to do what George Costanza did on Seinfeld and try to end on a high note. Okay, Ooh. so I feel like we've made some amazing points. Uh, we just had an amazing chat. I think we were trending up to like number five in the country. So like, uh, good job, Mastery Chat and Teach Better Nation. For, for making that happen. Um, but yeah, no, this has been an amazing chat. It's been an amazing uh, night. I want to thank Jeff Veal for yes. doing an awesome job. Um, and I'm going to let you finish it because I think you want to say something. I do, Chad. I know you want to end on a high note, but just to add like the little whipped cream and sprinkles on top, I get to see you in two days. You do. That's right. We're doing some work in Illinois this week. Next week, next week, we're doing some work. Well, in Sunday, Monday. I'm so excited. Can't wait to see you. So ending on a high note of an amazing chat. That's the highest note of all. Amazing team. And we get to see each other in person. And for those of you listening that know all about our team, we are mostly virtual, except when they say that they're lying.